Don't you? Okay, none. Perfect. And we are live. So, Satvik, uh, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Sunny. Good. How are you doing? I am well, my friend. I have been looking forward to this day for a very long time. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. I don't even know. Okay. So I like to normally get started uh, by talking about how we first met uh, or when we first met rather. Do you even remember uh, the date or the day or year or place? Yeah. It was April 2nd week, 2013. Uh, okay. Okay. Two th and where, was it the, the Hard Rock was, Cafe yeah. or was it at... Yeah, it was uh, Hard Rock Cafe in MG Road in Bangalore. That's correct. Nice, nice. Yeah, no, I remember those days. And it was at a Bitcoin meetup, right? That we were all hosting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, oh, it just feels like I can close my eyes and go back to that day. Um, you know, no, you don't us. want to because Bitcoin was maybe around $200. Oh, yeah, that's true, right? That's true. Actually, if I could go back in time, I'd probably make some. And then buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, I guess the time machine we're going to have to work on. Okay, so first, okay, so I guess where, where we can get started is. You know, I, I kind of think of uh, Bitcoin as a as a singularity, you know, like the, in mathematics, they talk about like the singularity. So so before Bitcoin came into your life and I guess kind of afterwards, I'm interested in knowing prior, first of all, uh, to Bitcoin coming into your life. What you know, what's your story? Uh, where are you coming from? You know, what was the kind of the lens that you were looking through that enabled you to you know, maybe appreciate some of the, the benefits that Bitcoin brings to the world. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a little tough for me to know, like, from where I should start the story, but... Um, diaper, start that... with the diaper. I want the diaper. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe the apt way, because uh, whatever I've done started from one day, right? So till then, whatever was happening was more that my parents taking care of me. So let's say from the day where uh, I started doing something myself. Uh, so uh, to, to talk about uh, that, I mean, I, I am from a uh, family where my, my father is a businessman. Uh, so uh, he was into oil, I mean, edible oil business, right? So, and my grandfather, he was into the same thing, but in a different city, my great grandfather was the same thing. So uh, when, when it comes to the business, I think I just have some part of that in my blood already because there's a family you grew up with, right? So I think the first set of a few things I have done uh, for profit, say, was when I was uh, helping my classmates to get uh, the, the smartphones, right? So where, uh, let's say, if, if under, I'm from Tumkur, which is like uh, an hour and a half from uh, Bangalore. Uh, so my friends could not really go to Bangalore to, to, to bring those, uh, those kinds of phones. That, that, the road is bad and they don't want to travel and like expensive reasons. And they don't know they don't want to get cheated they don't want to handle a lot of money etc so they used to give that to me and i had a friend who was traveling between bangalore to tumkur every day and uh, i just had to hand over the money to him and tell what exactly my friend need and he used to get it and uh, the phones used to, you should use, use it to cost me that cost about five thousand rupees or so which is maybe sixty dollars today and i used to add a profit of like ten dollars to it so that's how i that was the first set of few uh, transactions I have done. Wait, wait, so uh, you, when did you say this was? This was high school? No, no, university? Was, this was in PU, yeah, pre-university. Uh, this was like 2000, 2001. Uh, thing. So I was like somewhere when 18 years old, probably. Um, yeah. So, so after that, then I got into my engineering. And luckily, one of my uh, cousins um, had opened up a internet cafe, uh, which was very close to my uh, college, college's back gate. Um, so because he had one another business as well, and he just had like one boy who was taking care of uh, whoever comes in and goes out and such things. And there were, I mean, if you remember like how the, these inter internet cafes were, there used to be like one central system, we call it as like a server, and there are like eight interconnected uh, computers. So, and it was a, a dial-up based modem connection. So where uh, there is a phone number, you dial that and then uh, like at 56.6 kbps, the internet starts coming and that gets shared to about uh, eight or 10 uh, computers there, right? And then there, there will be a book where you keep a log of like which system was taken by whom, at what time they gave came in and at what time they got out and every one hour was like 30 rupees which is like 
say uh, 50 cents of, of, of today's price, right? So, uh, and whoever used to do that because it's a time-based calculation, right? So a lot of mistakes used to happen and I was, I used to be there to help him so that nothing goes wrong and I, I'm generally I'm good at mathematics. Uh, so then what I started doing was to sit on that server because server is not allowed for a customer. Uh, it's only for the, the owner or, or anyone like us or some cousin or a friend or anything like that. So where you don't charge for it. And because I started sitting in it and I used to take the count of uh, the customers coming in and the, the logging out, then the number of hours and minutes calculation and charging them money. So then I was allowed to use that server for free, uh, which had the internet connection of 56 kbps and that's where i think my kind of internet journey uh, was started what uh, year is so, this that big sorry this is in 2001, 2001 okay it's almost 20 years ago okay yeah so then and, and was uh, that your was that your, so that you did you have a computer in your house growing up or not really uh, not in 2001 i got it in 2004 so it was ah, a little okay Okay, but okay. how I knew about computers is because I used to go for a computer class, uh, which was like a weekly one hour class in my school, which just started from my standard four where I was like 10 years old. So I, was, I already knew about computers for 10 years, could know, I mean, already knew about some programming languages like C and C++ by then already. Um, uh, so, uh, so the first thing I started to uh, notice was like how the domains were, uh, we didn't have YouTube like the way it is today. Um, and Google search engine was obviously not powerful like today. So it was very tough to even search for information um, about like every little thing, right? So uh, then I started uh, to understand how the emails work, how the domains work, uh, how to create the web pages and such things. So Yahoo used to have a portal called GeoCities where people can create uh, uh, some web page on their own, like changing the icons, putting some images, uploading some images and such, and it just becomes like, you know, one uh, oh, one page, like geocities.com slash Sathwik could be my, my page. And that's like one page for me, that's it, nothing else. Uh, so when people used to come to those uh, oh, internet cafes, and I generally interact, like uh, what they know about it, etc. And let's say when I am sharing my email ID to them, uh, right, so that is like, uh, uh, great thing. Yeah, having email ID is almost never heard of uh, at that point of time uh, for a normal person, except for the people who are coming to uh, the internet cafe who knew about internet to some extent. Um, I mean, in, in India, we got internet in, from 2000, I mean, from actually 1999, I think that is when the commercial uh, commercialization of internet even happened. So that was only like two years into that uh, line. Uh, so I used to give my email ID as satvikvi at satvikvi.com. So is it satvikvi at Rediff? No. Is it uh, steffy.net? Oh, not really. It's not mail. Not really. I mean, it, I have my own domain. And people next started to get interested. How do I create mine? Right? So the next result that, yeah, I can create it for you. I have a control panel from blah, blah, blah. We didn't have GoDaddy much at that time. So there, was, there used to be one um, service called eBay, right? So I mean, even now, it, I think it exists. So there used to be one person in, uh, in Northern India who used to provide me credits to uh, register domain names and uh, web space on his server. So I used to send him demand draft and uh, then we kept track of how much money I am using it and I had to keep on refilling it again and again and such. Uh, so I used to send, uh, sell like 5 MB and 10 MB spaces for my customers and they used to come back saying they want more and I used to charge more. But, um, and then I used to help them create the uh, website. So at that time, chatting was a very, very big craze, you know, so Yahoo Messenger uh, was introduced at that time. I mean, they actually sunset that feature, I think one or two years ago. So because like nobody's using it nowadays, but at that time, Yahoo Messenger and MSN Messenger was so very popular. And they used to have like girlfriends and boyfriends on it. Um, and they used to have like different uh, countries communication happening for the first time and such things. And they want to say they want to impress their partner by creating greeting cards or some web pages, right? And I used to help them do that. <laughs> um, so, so and I used to get paid for that, etc. as well. And then, yeah, web spaces, emails, FTPs, various things we could do. Um, so, so that made me uh, some money. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so that pretty much took uh, my entire learning experience of four years of, of, of my 
uh, engineering, uh, I used to go there at least like four or five hours a day, where I learned pretty much from ABC to uh, maybe MNNOP of, uh, of internet. I mean, not everything, but uh, I, I had decent uh, knowledge of how, how everything works. So, so then I got the campus placement in uh, the while I was in the college itself, uh, and it was an MNC company. So my entire intention was to really see how AMNC works, right? So eventually I knew that uh, I am not an employee person uh, for the rest of my life. So um, I wanted to know what kind of policies exist, how do they manage uh, people, uh, what information needs to be disclosed. And there's like so many little, little things. And how do they even uh, say train a person who is just out of campus to become uh, an employee of a corporation, right? So those are all like academies and such things. So that made me learn how to do that. And then that also gave me material that I will have to use when I start my own company. Um, so just after uh, in month, I mean, a year and a quarter of, uh, of being there, uh, then I applied for a business school in Melbourne, like Melbourne Business School, um, went there for doing my MBA in information technology. Uh, to Australia. So, uh, I mean, that is actually where I got introduced uh, to uh, to a virtual world called Second Life, uh, in fact. Uh, so, because I was a programmer myself, um, it definitely like uh, made me a lot interested uh, in how the so-called virtual world works. And uh, there is even a uh, economy in this virtual tokens or virtual coins called Linden dollars. So it's about 250 Linden dollars is one American dollar. Um, so there are the, the language that we use it called is uh, LSL, like how we have C, C++, PHP, etc. So it's like this language is called LSL. So, so once you log in, all of us see ourselves like an avatar and we can go around and the, another avatar you meet is, uh, there is a real person behind it. Um, so you can interact with them. Uh, it's like total anonymous. Um, you can just pick up whatever you want. Maybe I can just uh, make my life there as if I'm a pilot. I mean, no one ever tries like role playing. Um, so uh, yeah, and and I used were to start for it. Hey, Sadik, were you into games growing up? I'm just curious. I was going to ask that earlier, but uh, like, were you also into gaming? I mean, because I'm just curious because you you and maybe it's because your family is like full of entrepreneurs that you. you but it, it, your whole story so far is all about like like kind of identifying entrepreneurial opportunities and going after them. But but were you, were you into like, I don't know what normal kids do? I remember I at that age, I was probably I playing. <laughs> yeah, the two games that I remember playing is NFS, like Need for Speed. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so I, I did that for some time. I didn't really like get a lot of fun. But the other one, which I used to play literally, uh, it's, it's called Commandos. So it's about like strategy, gaming, and there'll be some aim that you want to achieve. You will have four characters with different abilities for each character. You have to coordinate all of them and uh, say, create some kind of ambush to achieve something. Uh, it's like you are, you, it, it, is may, it is a story in Berlin, right? So where uh, there is some kind of fights happening and you have commandos from the government and you are like playing all of them. Uh, but but it was Second Life that really caught your, it was Second Life that really caught your imagination though. Like when you saw that, you were like, whoa, this is different. Well, what was it about it though? You said it was because it was virtual, but like what what was it um, kind of about the platform like that really- two things, right? So one is, see, in the game, every character you meet is an NPC, like non-playing character. It is just like a character, that's the end of it. And here, when you meet people, they are real person. Mm, mm. So you can actually uh, say, engage with them into a lot of interesting uh, it it could be they are telling lie, it could be they are telling the truth, but it doesn't matter as long as the consistency is preserved. So put it that way, right? So um, so that is one thing, and also there is an economy there. So it is not like you are uh, playing game for nothing. Uh, if you are doing some interesting work, and someone wants your uh, uh, someone wants your uh, uh, say services and such, they actually uh, play for it. Uh, pay for it, and then you can convert uh, the the Linden dollars to the the American dollars, and you know you can take money to your home. Um, so these the, these two things really, I mean, it's, it's like the difference is it, mm -hmm. majorly these two. 
and second like is all about creativity so uh, when it is a uh, say when it is a simple uh, uh, say uh, commandos game or or any other game right so there is a particular path you follow from level 1 level 2 level 3 and finally you end at level 20 or something like that but here uh, the moment you log in there is like no path right so it's 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 completely like uh, a a child is born in the world what path it takes it just is this depending on the child that's it so it, it can become a pilot it can become a dancer it can become actress or it can become a scripter like every profession so like mm-hmm. that you can be anything it's all it's all absolutely up to you you can be like an animator you can just be creating textures or a building of a house or or anything like that um so uh, i mean because i was a programmer myself i started offering custom scripting services so when i started offering custom scripting services what i mean by that is let's say if someone is building a home uh mm-hmm. then i used to create a automation scripts for them so where if they touch like one button then there are like 100 lights turning on the home and such things so i mean everything is virtual again um anyway and let's say if someone is building or conceptualizing a game i used to make that game work uh etc so when I mean, one of the really good projects i did do there um is i mean it, it we named it as spinax and i did it with, with one of my partner from ohio uh so it was like a breedable pet where we sell the male and a female egg kind of thing and people could hatch it then pair it to get the offspring which has uh some kind of uh, genetic properties this genetic code that i had written so which will give rise to the child and uh, the, the catch there is, uh, is that those animals should be eating food every day so that it can give birth to a child and the food was only sold by us so it was encrypted in such a way that uh, no other food works only our food works so people used to buy food um, and it takes like uh, $1 equivalent of I mean, one american dollar equivalent amount of food for every animal uh, to survive per month so uh, we we had as much as uh, say 41 customers at one point of time and uh, it was like acting like a god you know uh, you're creating your upgrading different uh, traits for that like changing the eye color to uh, something new and calling it as diwali gift or maybe christmas present or whatever and like the skins was was changing it's a halloween then there was a new set of eyes and skin that we used to introduce for people so uh, we used to go with kind of going with the flow and then on the other side understanding the sentiments of our uh, people and tweeting it to make that entire ecosystem um as much pleasing as possible and then there was actually lot of businesses itself that took birth because what, what year project. something what, what year are we in now like so you kind of i mean we were we were in 2001 then you went to uh uh sorry we fast forwarded you went to university you were doing businesses there you finally and so now you're you're uh you're 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 you've done your mba you're in australia you learn yeah. about um you learn about second life which is super mm-hmm. interesting and at one point i guess did you meet your business partner in your mba school or how did you come across oh, i i i met him in second life in second life okay that's funny that's funny have you you've met him in person or no never uh no but to I've, this day <laughs> i'm not in skype uh sure i have i have I've never met him so mohai So, right, 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 right. So uh, he, he could be a just a second life character in real life. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have seen his. <laughs> I mean, I have seen his digital. What do you call the driving license? I'm kidding. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, so he paid me for whatever earnings I was doing. Um, you know, used to give his KYC. No, no, no. I'm kidding. Um, no, no. He's uh, so, but this is so fascinating. So, so okay. So now you're technically, you know, obviously very, uh, you know, sound. You're you've got this like history of like entrepreneurship in your family, and you're just cultivating that further by getting your MBA. Now you've launched like a business, right? And and so okay. So it's it's called Phoenix. It's a fox, a virtual fox. that's breedable um where the mom and the dad you can pair them and then the offspring has characteristics of that so is that that whole kind of genetic engine did you guys have to develop that yeah. uh, so the genetic engine is i mean that say I, i don't know which i should call it as open source or open source information so uh if if there is dna from mother and father then there is a mathematical way of identifying the uh probability of the child's dna so i mean that exists in this real world actually um so these two things could 
gave rise to 50% this chance, 25% something chance, and 25% some other chance, or something like that. So I just had to put that in code. Um, Got it. Was, I had to do, and then there were different traits for uh, uh, these animals, like the mm. color of the mm -hmm. eyes, then the hair, uh, color of the skin, patches on the skin, then whiskers and shape of the ear, shape of the tail. Uh, so there is like so many different traits uh, that could, I mean, that we could do. And they, I mean, our project actually gave birth to a lot of businesses in Second Life. So there was like <clears throat> auction houses where people used to go and auction their uh, unborn phoenix, like in the form of a egg. So I have seen phoenix, uh, I mean, phoenix egg going uh, from one customer to another uh, customer for as much as 4,000 American dollars. Mm. Right, so because it's like really, really unique uh, in whatever way, and why someone else is buying is because maybe they have the opposite gender of it. They have also got the opposite gender of it. So by pairing the mother and female, I mean mother and father, which has very similar characters, then uh, the child will have the chances that the child will have the same is like maximum. So people right? could buy so, these phoenixes or something from you, or yeah, from one, person, one person can sell it. To, to, to got it, got it. Okay, and and they have these genetic characteristics, and the, how do people like? once they buy it do they have to keep it alive or is it just kind of yeah then they have to hatch the egg then pair the male and female together let's say both of them have a curvy tail example and if both of them have curvy tail then the, it is more likelihood that the children more children will have curvy tail so the age of the phoenix was like 45 days um, and it could have like nine offsprings so if both of them have curvy tail maybe uh, the chances are that uh, five of the offsprings have curvy tail and they could actually sell the offspring so you <laughs> buy one and then produce five you sell all five you and the, what year was this again that you started this business 2000 so this project was more active in 2011 and 12 interesting this is like crypto kitties before crypto kitties the original crypto kitties yeah, crypto kitties <laughs> Without, <laughs> without crypto okay just kitties uh uh and then and then and then and then was this what like a functioning business were you actually generating revenue or was it you know we just something you're doing for fun yeah yeah so we, we were generating very good amount of revenue so uh, we did kind of as much as uh, forty thousand such animals um on, on on second life and every animal used to cost one dollar for maintenance so uh, so what was maintenance like per month you mean like they'd yeah. have to pay so for, for, food, for the food right so every animal eat one dollar one american dollar worth of food per month and you had forty thousand of these animals these creatures virtual uh, creatures yeah. wonderful okay, okay and there okay. was zero expense and, uh, for us there is there is no way <laughs> zero expense okay okay so given yeah. a lot of other features like you could uh when your avatar could wear it to your head so it just becomes like a small uh and say animal around your neck you can hold it like this and you can walk with it uh, then you can ride it if it is bigger etc i mean there are size also was one of the traits so if it becomes like size of pearl then you can you, you can actually ride it as well it is really really big phoenix and such um so yeah that, that created a lot of uh, and and they could even duel i mean like there's a fight that can happen between could you tell where your user base was were they like kind of spread out all over the world <laughs> No, no you fun. can't. But, you know, because we talked to some of the customers, uh, we, we kind of understood that a lot of them were single moms, uh, people who wanted some kind of community around them. I mean, not everyone will have uh, the luxury of uh, going out with friends. Maybe some of them were handicapped, etc. Some of them like depressed for whatever reason. So these things gave like, uh, you know, a, a, a reason for them to live for, for many of them. And uh, I still remember when um, one of the, I mean, in, in real life, she was an old lady, maybe of 70 years. Uh, she used to love one of her phoenix. And after 45 days, it dies. So she got that uh, dead phoenix to us and was saying that, please make it alive. I, I want to live with it. Uh, so, you know, people actually got emotional. Uh, did you, did you grant her her wish? Such God, such thing. <laughs> we created something called Resurrection Kit. Uh, which Resurrection <laughs> Kit! Oh, it was no. 40 American dollar worth, I think. Um, and Amazing. We bought it uh, and it, ah. it, it, it became alive. That's, that's as simple as <laughs> that. And you know, the other things we have done in that is, let's say if there was no food for three continuous days, the Phoenix will actually become sick. And you need a med kit, like how you would take it to a hospital and get it uh, done. So there's like med kit, and uh, there is like 
and 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 uh, say for dueling purposes right so then you at least need two people and what if a person is on himself right so if you don't have a partner to deal with the phoenix then we reduce npc phoenix so which will take random actions by itself and uh, you, you you can play on from one side of the world <clears throat> my uh it was uh one of my daughter's uh, birthday recently and so we got her this toy called owly okay Owly, it's like a little physical owl, mm-hmm. uh, but and supposedly it flies, it flies. So, uh, but when you take it out of the box, it doesn't fly. You have to like take care of it. You have to feed it like this thing, and uh, and I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, kind of what you're saying. I think maybe maybe even like a physical form of it, <laughs> people can get attached to. Okay, something. So let's 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 let, let's go back to your story, man. So what what happens after that? So. Um, and then how are you essentially getting that is paid, where like, with my, mm. that is where the connection to Bitcoin happened right so mm. then I was earning good amount of money so so that was all good it's probably like 10 times more than what I would have done as just a simple engineer or maybe even an MBA um, so uh, when we start earning money I mean I had a bunch of people uh, whom I had employed to help me with uh, with these projects and other custom uh, scripting services and such and the way I, I I could get money to India was through PayPal. So first I had to convert the Linden dollars that I used to get, uh, so to American dollars through actually an exchange which is also run by the Linden uh, exchange, which is like Second Life people, Second Life owners owner company. Um, so that is when I even got to know like what an exchange is like, what is a bid order, what is ASCAR. So absolutely not related to crypto, but. Uh, Anyway, so then I, could, I had to convert that into the American, real American dollars. Uh, then I had to get it through PayPal, right? So PayPal used to charge me like 3.9% as a transaction fees and another 3% to convert the remaining American dollars into Indian rupees. So I used to lose like 7% of the money and that was a lot of money. Um, so that is when I started looking for uh, what mechanisms exist where money is just not getting siphoned off for changes in database. <laughs> um, so uh, that, that, that gave me, uh, that, that, that made me figure out uh, the Bitcoin, right? So then I took some break uh, from that project. I mean, which actually, that the next project even runs today. So we still have customers. We have the complete ecosystem uh, still in place, but it's totally taken care by my business partner uh, itself. Um, so yeah, uh, then I took a little bit of break to really read about it, to understand how things are working without someone in, someone in between. Um, so it, it could be paper, it could be second life. There is someone in between, right? So how can something work without someone in between was, was, was a kind of question. So it, it made me kind of look through all aspects of, of Bitcoin and obviously I was very amazed. So these are all the things whatever I'm talking about is happening in 2012 when I'm, I'm earning good enough money, but losing some money because of inefficiency in transactions and such. So then uh, I was looking at what is happening in the Bitcoin space in uh, India. That is the first time I found out about meetup.com. And uh, when I saw that weekend, someone is doing a meetup in Bangalore, which is only like one hour drive away from me out of India, he could, they could be doing anywhere, but it was happening in Bangalore. So that was like great thing. I said, okay, fine, I'm going RSVP. And uh, when I met there, uh, that's where I met Sunny. He was the organizer of the meetup. <laughs> 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 no, uh, you know, I think I've been doing this Bitcoin stories thing now for a couple of weeks. And I, I, I think like not 80% of them, the, I, for some reason or another, the common theme is meetup.com. Wow. Like a lot of people meet mm-hmm. uh, other Bitcoiners at meetup. So I, I'm a big advocate of, of that. Um, okay. So you come to the meetup. No, can you talk about that feeling? Because I, I remember that feeling too, you know, because I came to a Bitcoin meetup that was actually, I'm going to interview Benson, I think. Well, actually, he's kind of, I don't know, uh, hopefully soon. <laughs> um, but I, I, he was the one, he was the guy kind of hosting the first first. He kind of ha- handed over the reins afterwards. But that feeling that, oh my God, there's another person nearby that knows this weird, crazy, potentially world-changing thing. It's kind of an exciting feeling, no? <laughs> that, that, that's definitely true. But there, you know, it was kind of money at the end. So uh, 
it's i mean i was realizing a lot of people whatever they were talking half of it they don't know what they're talking right so it it was not like i was super impressed with the first meetup but then i understood that the only way i can be with some people who know about this is still the same meetup that, that that's pretty much it so and try to figure out like what i could do um to do something which is which has some value um in the bitcoin space i mean i had the technical knowledge now i had the developers uh with me i know how to do a business uh to to how to do the required calculations such a way that you know we can take the business towards profitability and revenue and generating revenue and profitability um so yeah the the, the few different things we have we have tried uh, right so well, one was uh, the the bitcoin mining so where uh, i was a member of that bitcoin talk.org so where i went there and ordered a butterfly miner which was like 5 giga hash um paid uh, quite a bit of bitcoin um at that time to even get that and feel what it looks like so what can generate bitcoin uh right so but then there was like lift difficulty going up then we had i mean i had a few uh i mean there was a small small team um, so where we were thinking of uh, uh trying to do with be better and bigger miners so we collected from i mean uh, some btc uh, there and tried to get a, a couple more miners but eventually lost quite a bit of i mean in terms of bitcoin we definitely have lost money Uh, but if i have to compare it with uh, with rupees we definitely have got uh, quite a bit uh, right so uh, then i had one of my cousin who was interested uh, in this particular space and then i had my brother who was interested uh, one of my long term friends who i met in the cyber cafes uh, like more than like 10 12 years ago so he was interested in this space so all of us started uh, going to the meetups which was happening uh, every weekend uh, sometimes in like really posh hotels and uh, and every time we we talk about uh, the bitcoin and its price going up 2013 was one of the really good years for the, for the bitcoin price right so it went up from 16 dollars to 1050 dollars um so by the by, by the end of the month by the end of the year which was like the december so we saw as much as 1050 dollars so as the price of the bitcoin went up i think it had definitely a lot of correlation to the number of people who are turning into that uh, meetup so there were few of them where we had uh, close to about 70 or 80 people like a mini conference uh, and everyone talking about bitcoin and then no one had a way to buy it yet right so some people are trying to mine it the difficulty was uh, kind of uh, good enough where a normal computers was obviously no more working by 2013 so then who then some people started bringing some money hoping that uh, hoping that another person who comes there might have mined bitcoin to 10 and to 11 because at that time difficulty was low uh, so they tried to exchange some exchanges happened um, but uh, i definitely felt that this was not the way the the transaction is supposed to work we need um, a much more organized way and how many people are coming to the meet up only like 60 70 80 people and india is a country with at that time i think maybe 1.22 billion population so there are so many people who have uh, who may know about this but have no way to do it right so uh, i took those as a business opportunity so all of us combined with like co women four four co-founders um everyone complementing the skill set of each other so where i was coming more from the tech background and losing money because of transaction fees and coming here and there was uh, harish uh, who was coming uh, from somewhat like business background as well and banking and uh, and compliance background and he wanted to see what is that which will disrupt the banks that was his biggest question right so and uh, when it comes to habib he was into marketing and such and he happened to hear uh, about bitcoin from one of his friend and then i explained him because he's also my cousin um so and then we have you sunny so who is bringing the international um experience and business development skills so i think this kind of uh, made sure that the the core uh, the, the 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 core co-founding team uh, more or less had the required uh, complementing skills uh, which is required for creating a platform and making it a success so that made us to create uh, uno coin 
So, Mr. Sunny, you remember you had uh, UnoCoin.com registered like two years ago, I think, and you were uh, securating some of the news uh, uh, there, and there was just like links, and you told me that you want to hand over that particular domain uh, to me because you could not do uh, anything, and that is uh, your dream that uh, you want it to be a business. And uh, and Uno is actually one of the famous games in India, so people in <laughs> India kind of know what is Uno. Like it's like one in Spanish, but uh, people in India play Uno. So that made me yeah accept that domain and build that. No, wait, when you when you win, you say Uno, right, or something in that game? Oh uh, no, when you have or, a single card. Um, yeah. But if you put, you are done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when you right? win. So, you have to say it before you have a, I mean, when you have a single card and maybe you're not putting the single oh, card because oh, color oh, is not okay, okay, okay. the color is not right, something bad. So then other people will do the strategy to okay, okay. make sure that you don't put your, your color card. So right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. Um, so yeah, I mean, my, my first question was, I mean, what kind of features on UnoCoin will make the customers feel comfortable on the day one, right? So uh, I can make it as complicated I want, I can make it as easy as, as I want. Um, so uh, we thought, I mean, first of all, Bitcoin is complicated, at least on that day, so 2013, right? So uh, we thought we don't want to use like the Mt. Gox exchange style features, uh, bid and ask and limit order market order. Uh, the, the, the normal person will be scared because first of all, they don't know or they are very new to Bitcoin. And they're learning it yet. So uh, making it anything like this could could, could make it more uh, complicated. So I thought just giving it as a simple buy and sell feature. Uh, so we started publishing a price at which we as a company can buy from our customers and at a price at which we want to sell the Bitcoin to our customers. Um, so it was like buy and sell prices for for our uh, and where are we now? We're in somewhere in 2013, right? Where yeah, I guess all of us, the four of us are sitting around. We've tried now, um, you know, we've tried Bitcoin mining, uh, maybe not so successful, at least in Bitcoin terms, which was really yeah. our main goal. Uh, uh, we did, I, I think if you remember, I remember the conference, even we tried to do something called yeah. physical Bitcoins, like Cassius, Cassius coins or something like that at the time. Yeah. Uh, we did the conference, like the big, big conference, right? In December, 2013, we did, uh, so there was like a bunch of, I don't know how many little experiments, right? That, that we were running to see where is kind of the opportunity. Um, and it was really like seeing with our own eyes, people, people, right? Asking and, and wanting to buy Bitcoin and wanting to sell it and not knowing kind of like where to do it, that where we kind of saw the opportunity. So what, so now, um, so that, that kind of, I get concludes a bit about like your, you know, Bitcoin singularity moment, right? Like where you, how you came into it, uh, why you discovered it, and then kind of going, okay, I want to do something with it. I want to be around people, like start trying ideas. And now, um, so now, now, so we're now, I think it was around December, 2013, we're, we're gearing up for an event that we're going to launch. Uh, you know, I had a bit of a detour there too, where I went and took a job with a company called Buttercoin. In fact, my, the interview that comes out right before the one with, that we're doing will be with Bennett, <laughs> who is the CTO at Buttercoin. So it'd be nice. But, uh, but at the, at, but during that time, uh, we were all working on doing an event, right? Called Global Bitcoin Conference, right? That was the yeah, domain. Global That's right. <laughs> want to use uh, the the I, I mean, at least like media, you want to do some some kind of noise that something called Bitcoin exists in the country, and very obviously very few know about it. So one way we could do is to actually have a conference. So from what I know, probably there's the first Bitcoin conference in the entire Asia. Um, so that happened in uh, in Bangalore Sheraton Hotel. So uh, there, I mean, if you remember, Sunny, we had even invited law uh, I mean, people from Reserve Bank of India, uh, SEBI, from CBI. Uh, I mean, yeah, I do. Them. I definitely remember that. What was the thinking Bitcoin behind? Bitcoin. What, what was the thinking behind that? Like, why? Yeah, I mean, I know we invited everybody, but what 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 was the thinking behind? I guess inviting. I mean, because I, I think you, yeah, at the end of the yeah. day. Uh, if Bitcoin is successful, which is kind of, uh, that's what our understanding on that day as well. Uh, I mean, everyone, these are the kind of stakeholders uh, in one or the other way. So it will come under 
them i it could be for investigation or to write some policies uh, to help someone who lost it so i mean any issues that happen will come under them at, on one or the other day right so uh, we wanted to provide a platform where uh, we talk about it and uh, they at least know that this exists and this is where uh, the journey is uh, so far for bitcoin and then also uh, for us to talk about uno coin and that we are launching there um, on, on that particular day for for the country like india right so uh, but interestingly all of them turned up many of them turned up actually so well, some of them asked does not to identify or like disclose their identities and such uh, that was all good so there are people who are making notes pages and pages to really you know like it, it started from how bitcoin works and where it is headed what are the what else is happening in the country which country is treating like what uh, where I mean, what it looks like when it is uh, india and such so yeah, and then what is the mining and how the trading happens uh, how the bitcoin get generated so I mean, there's like those are the different actually uh, the recordings from that uh that global bitcoin conference are still online aren't they yeah 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 on on uh, so we actually have it on uh, uno coin uh, youtube channel is it I is know. okay okay, uh, okay yeah 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 so i was looking very different on that day in fact if you remember <laughs> with the mustache and very no yeah uh so uh, yeah uh, I, I, from what i remember it was you who presented what is bitcoin you are the first speaker actually in entire asia to talk about bitcoin in a conference and i was uh, the no i'm kidding <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah. Was, I was the second guy <laughs> second guy yeah yeah with the mustache <laughs> yeah um, yeah Uh, so yeah so and uh, there we launched uh, uno coin to, to, to people in india and we started seeing registrations from day one um, and if you remember uh, that is uh, that is also i mean you 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 met uh, uh, one of the famous lawyer's son on the way when you were going back to mumbai never right? forget it yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so yeah. he was surreal right he was sitting front row yeah, during the event yeah yeah, yeah. the son of uh, nishit desai nishit desai that's right um, in mumbai so then yeah through you actually we got the appointment to actually you know, meet uh, nishit desai so if, if you remember that meeting sunny uh, we were so astonished to have a lawyer talk about bitcoin perfectly like there was like no ambiguity nothing he exactly said how it works he exactly said everything and he had a huge wing uh, who was researching on uh, who were researching on uh, this concept and to figure out like what it means for india what it means for the world uh, where it is heading and such um, so yeah i mean even today they are actually the lawyers for uno coin right so i never forget that day do, do you think nisha would would be down to tell his story his bitcoin story I, I don't see him doing I mean, much stuff like that. I, mean, I, I remember one thing he always says: whatever lawyer says is final. So it doesn't matter what everyone else says. So, <laughs> so I mean, you should definitely ask. Um, no, I, I should, I should hit him I, up. He's I, maybe he he will not spend like ninety days, up to ninety minutes. Ninety minutes, yeah. Yeah, maybe thirty yeah. minutes. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so continue. So I definitely remember that meeting. Meeting, yeah, surreal. And then surreal introducing us to Nishit. and uh that was a very enlightening conversation and i always talk about like bitcoin is not just like a technical play it's like you have to you have to be willing to at least kind of go down that path and really understand like laws and regulations and work with lawyers to to make sure you navigate that path you know wisely okay so so what happened so december 2013 we do this massive conference you have a handsome like host uh introduce you you come on with the mustache do your thing we have uh what what happens after that we have uh we launch uno coin and then all of us go to bombay because i was living in bombay at the time we all go to bombay to go meet nishit right i think at one point yeah. and and if i'm not mistaking we kind of uh like people were coming to uno coin and we kind of didn't even realize it or something at one point because we were like in bombay or is that true like it was it a bit of a surprise I like i was, <laughs> was actually not expecting users to start coming in in the first week itself actually so we had uh, quite a few hundred of uh, users who signed up on on uno coin in the first week um, itself and then started placing orders so i think our maximum order that a customer could place was 5000 rupees 
uh, which is like sixty dollars uh, per day per user, so something like that. So that was like maximum. Um, and just after uh, say a, a week or so after we launched Uno Coin, there was a warning from Reserve Bank of India saying. Uh, I mean, there was a first warning actually in the history of Reserve Bank of India against I mean about cryptocurrencies. Let's say. So they came out with a warning saying, yeah, this we know this something called Bitcoin exists. There are other cryptos like Litecoin and Dogecoin and a few other things as well. And there are security risks. You could lose the money. There are financial, um, the security risk because you could get hacked and you could lose it. There are financial risks. There is, uh, there's like volatility and there's no real backing and such. And there are legal risks because uh, it is not uh, completely regulated yet. So, so because of uh, those, uh, those reasons, so they, they cautioned uh, the citizens of India that uh, people who want to get involved in should really be doing it at, at, at their own risk. And even though that notice did not uh, kind of say what can be done, what cannot be done, it kind of made everyone to start wondering, like, what does this mean? Because of the first notice about cryptocurrencies from the central bank. So that made us actually go back to Nishit Desai, uh, asking like, uh, boss, what does this mean? Uh, you know, so, um, uh, then actually at that time he had uh, uh, two paths. Uh, one is to take on one side, uh, to put a letter to Reserve Bank of India, take clarification what it means. Uh, and obviously he's a very well-known corporate lawyer uh, with a, I mean, with, with actually I think probably there are more than a few hundreds of lawyers working with him uh, under the Nishi Desai Associates. Uh, so he had a dedicated wing, etc., and who did did take a couple of days to come back saying that okay, this is more about the warning, but uh, doing the transactions uh, or buying and selling of cryptocurrencies is uh, is no way illegal in India. So what he did was uh, instead of trying to take the path of asking RBI or filing a case about it or asking for more uh, info, anything like that, he called for a press conference saying, uh, look, we have understood that there is a warning. But uh, this one that exists called Bitcoin is not illegal in India and uh, people cannot, I mean, people need not bother about the legality uh, itself. Uh, but yeah, the other risks continue to exist, financial security risk, but at least the legality wise, um, it's not illegal. So that kind of uh, made Bitcoin more popular in the country because it is coming up from well-known Nishdes or associates. And after that, after a few days, uh, we, we again, I mean, we had actually paused the uh, transactions for some time uh, because of the confusion that started with this notice. So I think we didn't do business for about four or five days after the clarity was given in the press conference and the news was open. I mean, the information was already there in the media. So then uh, we again started doing the transactions in, uh, in, in Uno coin and we let users to start, uh, I mean, continue buying and selling the Bitcoin and actually that is that is also the I mean when we had paused the operation for like few days, that is when actually Barry Silbert wrote to us. Um, so, before we get into the Barry, wasn't there also thirty people from the tax department knocking on your door on like day five or something? Uh, that, that's right. So uh, we call them as IRS. Like, um, and by this time, I think I I had for Christmas gone to Colombia. I remember I was. Anyways, yeah, but continue. Yeah. Yeah, you're not in the country, that's for sure. So yeah, uh, they, they did come here. I mean, it was definitely not like a raid or anything like that. It was more about they want to know what it is and how we are handling transactions, right? So uh, because there was no example in the country and they almost they have never dealt anything with this um, in the past. So they they wanted to they wanted me to tell about Bitcoin, how it works, what we do as a as, as a company. Um, how are we making sure that the KVC documents, like what are the documents we are trying to collect, uh, how we are making sure that the transaction is happening only through bank accounts, uh, because that's what we claimed. I mean, even today, we, it's the same thing. But um, yeah, they wanted to like uh, make me tell everything. And I took it as an opportunity to tell that. And so they, they uh, checked our database of, uh, of records, like how we are managing all the, all the data on our servers and such things. Um, so yeah, I did, they were here for maybe like more than eight hours or so, and we had only done about a few hundreds of transactions by then. That's, that's pretty much, and we had even paused the, the, the operation because of the confusion by, that was caused by the notice to, to, to people. 
Uh, then, uh, yeah, so af after that, uh, we went to Lishit Desai, so he gave the press conference. After that, again, we opened opened the shop and the country, we continued people. I remember in the midst of that, though, uh, you know, it, it, uh, maybe, oh, I, I'm just actually curious on your perspective. Was, was it scary at all? Like, because I mean, you know, when people think about running businesses, it's like part of what people fear is, is like doing the wrong thing, right? And, and obviously Bitcoin is kind of a heavy topic and it deals with banks and money you need to transfer. So I'm just curious, like, were you, were you what, what was your state of, uh, you talked about how you felt before you came to the meetup, that was excitement. But before, as these people were, 30 people were lined up at your four, four person startup, you know, <laughs> front door. So I, I think was I, it well, like uh, excitement as well or? I mean, on one side, um, I, I didn't know the seriousness of the situation, uh, to, to be frank, because um, that was like first time I'm seeing so many people walking in to even ask anything. Did but you think there were customers side, at the beginning or, or who did you think? No, I'm I, kidding. <laughs> so, so on the other side, I, I knew that uh, whatever we are doing is not wrong. And also that those people know less than me. So that, that I was very sure about and i took it as an opportunity to tell everyone like how, how it works so i mean i i don't know the exact intention why they were uh, here but eventually it turned out to be a knowledge transfer session more or less over a period of time with the eight hours uh, and such so I, I think that gave me some and like extra confidence uh, that okay this is what it means uh, mm. so and do you remember i called you and i was like satvik like let, let's pull out like we don't need to do this right now because there was some other stuff happening in india too that was very scary mm -hmm. around bitcoin and so i was just like let's just forget forget this and do you remember what you said <laughs> <laughs> I, I i think you better uh, you you better say that <laughs> than me telling it uh, yeah 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 well yeah, we will leave for another one i mean I, i'm just curious because well you said something right you said something uh, along the lines of um kind of how if you would give up on Bitcoin, then, you know, India would potentially lose out on the opportunity. And so I thought that was pretty significant. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I think those, see, I guess one of the things, like one of the reasons I'm doing this, right, this kind of show or whatever is to inspire more people to build businesses on top of Bitcoin, because I think it's a bit of a black box. And I think, you know, I think there's this like um, misconception that what you need to build a Bitcoin business is uh, technical chops. I think a lot of people have very smart technical abilities, but I think what a lot of people lack is mm -hmm. courage. And so, um, and kind of the ability to, you know, deal with all the, like you said, stakeholders uh, head on to some extent. And I know there, there is this argument that maybe you shouldn't, maybe you should not talk to them, but when they come to your front door and start knocking, how do you not, uh, you know, how do you not talk to them? You know, anyway, so, okay. So how do you, how do you, how do you go from here? So, okay. So Nishit now releases this, uh, this, you know, a, like what a boss move, right? Just boom. Okay. It puts out a, a news uh, press release in his office low it, 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 and again his words were carefully chosen he didn't say bitcoin is legal because no law firm can yeah. say that but he, he he did clearly indicate that bitcoin is not illegal as per their understanding yeah. and and okay and then so what happened after that so no coin um you said barry reached out okay what happened when barry reached out barry reached <laughs> out and his question was i think he said like congratulations on starting something in india uh, what, what are your future plans and what are your printing plans uh, if you're looking for money? So like, uh, I mean, with, at the unit economics level, we were already doing some revenue. So because there were like a few hundreds of transactions and uh, we were charging some transaction fees for it. And I, from what I remember, I wrote back saying that uh, we are not looking for funding. Uh, so that, that, that's pretty much and we will keep you updated or something like that. So I just stopped there and he said that, yeah, if, if you did it, you can turn it right back to me and such. And I think after like 15 days or so after our transactions was back, he wrote back saying that, uh, did you start back your transactions? I said, uh, yes, we have started back. And uh, and then it was a, I mean, we kind of started understanding how the startup works generally, right? So the normal business is very different from a startup. Um, so then uh, we understood that like, okay, we need to hire few more employees, then the service costs could, would go up and we have more customers. But then there is a uh, lot of other like utility and other uh, expenses um, that, that we started to foresee. 
right? So whatever the expenses I had when I was uh, just working in Second Life, right? So uh, it was close to almost nothing. Uh, so probably my expenses was in terms of two thousand dollars for the entire company, including salaries. That's pretty much it. Uh, so including our scripters, me, rent, electricity, etc. Um, so but we understood that this was not the case when it comes to run, running a platform like uh, like Kuna Coin. And that uh, made us to again write back to them saying, yeah, we are requesting a meeting. And uh, I think he gave a meeting after like 40 days um, of we writing to them saying, okay, on, on March 28th or something like that, we can talk about it. Then we waited all the way and uh, we spoke to him. We said like, uh, yeah, we, we, we can take some money uh, for, 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 the, for the company. And we, I mean, at that point of time, I should, I should be frank that I didn't even know like what does investment of money means into the into the company. Like, what are we supposed to give in return, right? So once he confirmed that, yeah, he's definitely interested in investing in Unopoint, then we went to the lawyers who actually explained how the equity dilution works, um, then what it means uh, when when someone is giving you money, what rights they will have, what you should be careful about. And what will have in the future rounds of funding, et cetera, et cetera. So that was very different from like very normal company. I mean, we had the private limited company by then already, but uh, we had not taken, we, I had less information about uh, uh, this so called, you know, startup path. Um, so yeah, we actually accepted a quarter million dollars from him uh, in, in 2014. For, for, for <laughs> And, and something there's, I think, I mean, I, I don't want to keep uh, taking us off topic. And by the way, uh, we're all, we're almost like at the end of our 90 minutes. So we're going to definitely have to do like a part two or something, right? Because uh, we're just getting warmed up here. But uh, I was going to say on the on the investor side, there's another, I think, kind of key point in there that a lot of people miss. They think that you when you need money, you go to an investor. But it's actually the opposite. It's uh, when you don't need money, you go to an investor, right? And and it was kind of interesting that, you know, you're you were almost surprised that somebody would want to give you money or us money uh, for an opportunity. Um, but okay, okay. And, and I remember there was like a nice lesson in there from Barry too about network effects, right? Like you don't need to raise money for you know if you're doing like a restaurant maybe or something. But uh, but if you're in a business where there's like uh, network effects at, at play, there's a bit of a winner take all and, 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 you know, and, and so, so, so investing in your company and, and raising money is, is a kind of a strategic bet on, on, on the fact that you're, you're on the path or you'd like to build like, you know, a very, very significant company. Um, okay. So what, what else, Sadvik? So what happens after that? So we, you, you build, you know, a startup. I think around that time I, I came back, I was just like, what, like Barry Silver, like, are you kidding me? Like this guy, I, I call him the Batman of Bitcoin, right? He's like my hero in, in many ways. And, uh, and so the fact that he started believing in this project that, that we all, you know, kind of worked on was a bit of a surprise. And, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. So that was that was interesting. So what happened after that? So now you're building the company. I guess what's the next big milestone? Uh, now I could get a few more uh, few more employees. Then talking about the fact that we have funding obviously increased the trust that people had on our uh, on our company. Uh, then we, we kept on building the the company. I think so, like one part at a time. So and we kept on listening to our customers. Uh, so if I don't talk about the, you know, the, the product for uh, the different products we have under uh, Unocoin. So we built this kind of systematic buying plan so that helped customers to average the cost of Bitcoin over time. And then like how I was a kind of working freelancer and getting money from US. So there were quite uh, so many people, even now in India, who actually work for uh, different corporates in, uh, in US and they just get paid once a week or once a month. So I think even, even on that SBP, right? I think a lot of people kind of refer to it as dollar cost averaging, but you know, I think Cash App just released that recently and it was like a big news, but you said you built that when? 2014. 2014, right? So almost six, yeah. six years ago. Um, yeah. and, and that is, in my view, the best way for people to get into Bitcoin, right? Which is just like, set it, forget it every day, week, month, whatever it is, you just pick up a little bit of Bitcoin. If the price goes down, you get more Bitcoin. If the price goes up, you, you Bitcoin's up. So you're great. So both way yeah. you're happy and you don't need to necessarily be a trader. I think, you know, trading is where a lot of... Uh... So, so interestingly, <laughs> 
Interestingly, today morning, I was actually checking our database to, to see the statistics about the strategic buying plan um, that people had opted for. So actually like more than 99% of the customers um, are in profits, uh, whoever have opted for this, right? So given the price of Bitcoin today. How good today, does that feel? Like that, that is, that's, that's something to stay. We could just close the interview here and that would be it. Like 99 point, whatever percent of people who systematically bought Bitcoin over however many years we've been in existence have are in the green. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I was telling you right that recently is like, I think as a company is it would be interesting for us to do an analysis on what products, what sets of solutions have done the most amount of good and has done the least amount of hurt or pain. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I'm sure there are some, assets that we've introduced over the years that that hasn't been that way and we felt market pressure to do so etc cetera, etc cetera. but but i think doing good and not evil uh is, is hard right it's a balance that you're always trying to figure out and like you know okay so so what, what happens after this so spp you've got the bit pay like i guess we shouldn't call it bit pay like but the e-commerce platform but it's different right like how is it different because there's lots of kind of angles to it so i think it was very similar to what BitPay do so where they provide, I mean, I, I don't know whether they even provide POS kind of application, maybe uh, we, we were the first because we started in 2014 itself. So uh, through APIs, they can start accepting Bitcoin as a mode of payment. And for the physical merchants, like brick and mortar merchants, we introduced a mobile app of like less than one MB that, you know, the people can install on iPhone and uh, Android. So that it can, they can use it like a POS. So they just have to type in saying 5,000 rupees, then submit, the app connects to our server to know the like present price of Bitcoin and we give a address to which they can accept the Bitcoin and <coughs> sorry, that we provide a locked in rate for about 30 minutes. So within that, if they're getting the payment, then we honor the same locked in rate, like 0% transaction fees. And there is nothing like chargebacks or, or anything we can think of. Uh, so that definitely attracted uh, a lot of uh, retailers because uh, a lot of retailers actually do business with uh, less than 5% margin like which is like the revenue and if they are in if they are uh, oh, taking credit cards for for the invoices they they end up losing as much as 2% of it right so uh, now for doing a business of 100 rupees uh, their revenue is only 3 rupees but the moment they have uh, someone who is paying them in bitcoin then the revenue is 5 rupees so that's like a jump of 66% uh, in your revenue all of a sudden so i mean the the margin that they get like that was a very very impactful and a lot of people you know integrated that so uh, we had close to about 2000 merchants uh, all across india who are accepting bitcoin as a mode of payment so we had people who were selling books gifts cds um, server space train and bus tickets flight tickets there was a school which was accepting bitcoin for fees um, then there was a portal which was accepting Bitcoin for uh, selling the Flipkart and uh, Amazon and uh, Snapdeal, like few, few such very popular e-commerce portal, uh, portal watchers, right? So, and uh, then there was a, another service which was offering top up of uh, your prepaid mobile phone, pay your bills and such. And, and we also had the direct uh, uh, security bill payments on our app itself. So our customers could pay their mobile phone bills and prepaid and TTH connections and such. So that was like a utility part that we answered it that way. And then we, the one other interesting feature I want to bring here is, I mean, we named it as auto sell because we don't know what to name it as. Um, so what it did was uh, if there is any Bitcoin that is coming into that unique address uh, that belonged to a customer, the Bitcoin just got sold at that point of time instantly and money go to the bank account. Uh, so there is no need for the customer to even log in. So how this helped was uh, there was freelancers in India and because of the time difference, right? So uh, people in India don't want to take the risk of volatility till their morning when uh, it gets processed in the midnight of India, which is a daytime for America, right? So uh, what it did, what this did was like very magical. That's what like a lot of uh, our customers said that they are getting <laughs> all the money. Yeah. They are getting all of the money. By the time they wake up, the money is there with almost like no fees, right? So it's, I mean, we used to charge about 1% fees, but they used to save from the 7%, which is like 6% savings is a lot of money. 
and by the time they wake up they just have the money in the bank account and it's just like as if uh, nothing happened and someone just deposited the money to the bank account it was like a simple transaction it looked like for them uh, so we had more than a few tens of thousands of freelancers who signed up for the service um, so and they were used to avoid conversion fees and transaction fees uh, through the third parties which is which is kind of sweet because if you remember the beginning of your story that's why you initially came to that meetup right which was yeah. like you wanted to solve this problem of middlemen and you wanted to make it more efficient and so now you'd reached a point by what now we're 2015 2016 i think all these products are still in 2014 and 15 2014 2015 and another kind of key theme is is like listening to customers right like and and really trying to build a, a home for for where you could just rely on bitcoin to do you know what you needed to get done and another kind of key point i wanted to mention is is you also um not only listen to customers but listening to regulators right like uh, mm -hmm. regulators complained about volatility <laughs> so now if you super are worried about bitcoin's volatility like a freelancer would you just auto sell right so using yeah. technology to address the concerns of regulators, stakeholders, customers is part of, you know, this, this like story of Unocoin, right? Okay, so what happens after that? Um, I mean, 20, I think the next few years, and again, something, um, I was going to say, we, we've covered a lot of ground. Um, we might want to do a few more minutes, but if you even want to like take a pause, because this is kind of a good time, because if you think about it, the next five years, it's mm -hmm. like another podcast, right? Like we, we've got uh, a lot. And I know the last thing I want to do is rush through that because that, that's kind of the essence of it. So, so may, should, maybe we should pause there, man. What do you think? I think, I, th I think so as well. So we are at like 2015. It is just the point when uh, Unocoin had its brand name and was just about to take off. I think from there, it's definitely worth a movie, I guess. So I always think that way. Well, you know, I always say, right, like someday there's going to be a Bollywood movie made. And then finally, one day I woke up, I'm like, wait, there's something called YouTube. Like I could just, you know, you interview don't all the I don't need that. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, people are not going to the... Nowadays, people are not going to the theaters anyway. So it may just be a Netflix movie. <laughs> exactly. It, it, someday, someday they'll turn some of this hopefully into a Netflix. Hopefully it's one of the good ones because they always like yeah. have a way of, like there's a lot of, I don't know. How we have Bitcoin documentary already there. So uh, this is from like Cox's mouth. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. And, and exactly from the horse's mouth. And it's not, I mean, I have, you know, over the years, I mean, we could probably do a whole segment on like media and how they take, you know, words and turn them into something that they want to turn it into. And, and so, you know, part of the reason is, is yeah, just get our story out there and make sure that, you know, that we, we get to tell it right at, at our pace. Okay. So I think I'm, I'm good with that, man. Let's, let's, let's take a pause. This was awesome. I, I'm so glad we took time. And, you know, I mean, I think there's a lot of stuff that I, I hadn't even heard about um, in the past. So Thanks, Satvik. Really appreciate it. Oh, I know you're super, super busy, obviously, with everything going on with UnoCoin. Recently landed a round of financing from Tim Draper. Woo woo! <laughs> right? Like, holy I cow. Part of second story, uh, second part of the story, sure. <laughs> exactly. And then I think a lot of exciting things, right, with uh, with UnoCoin happening. But but again, I think let's uh, in the next week or so, if you have time, let's let's get another session done and and let's keep going and let's 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 do a full thing on on kind of the the you know the RBI and kind of the conversation there and what happened and you know some of it was obviously a little bit uh, oh. you know, scary and whatever whatever but. I do think again that you know people like us need to go out there and share our stories so that others can be like, "Hey, it's possible." Like, wait, it's like we should be doing this too. And, and, and somewhere, yeah, somewhere. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think cool. the Reserve Bank of India fight itself is maybe worth a few hours of talk if, if you want to really. Hundred percent. That's why that, right. something that actually people don't know, right? So they on one side they knew that the, the notice was there. And then they knew that the fight is happening and then the verdict. So that's all they know. They almost don't know what happened. Nothing, uh, nothing. nothing. Yeah, nothing. And I'm <laughs> trying to article every angle of it, every angle. So yours, so Harish. Talking to Harish, yeah, yeah. So I'm working up to Harish. No, 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 people are not going to get Harish yet. Harish, we're working up to yeah, Harish. Yeah. Harish is going to be like the you know, finale. <laughs> it's like the Netflix special. We're, we're building up to Harish. <laughs> He played a very, very pivotal role to make this happen, right? So 
uh, I'm, I'm so glad that um, at one point I was supporting so that Bitcoin, I mean, India don't lose out on Bitcoin. And then we have one of the co-founders, Harish, who share very similar vision of, of where even if it is the bigger fight, much massive fight, um, he made sure that we don't lose out. So it is just uh, that I am so glad I, I found this entire co-founding team uh, to, to keep growing but sure yeah. exactly yes, exactly no i'm i'm definitely working my way up to harish it would be better if you and i could do our session and then it's like a one-two punch we bring harish out do a you know i don't know barbara walter style expose okay let's let's kill it here uh thank you my friend we'll talk again soon we'll yeah. kill it